All right. Hello, English 102 students. I want to take uh, just a minute to address a growing concern in academia. And I know that most of you are aware of chat GPT and AI tools, all sorts of things. And I've seen the usage in these tools really increase in the last year or so, uh, so much so that I'm having conversations almost every quarter with students about uh, chat GPT and other AI tools. So I wanted to take this video lecture to just have kind of an honest discussion about uh, this particular technology. So I want to start with a simple question, which is how many of you have used chat GPT? And obviously, this is a video lecture, so you don't have to answer that. Uh, but really, you know, I know that a lot of students have used it or at least played around with it. Uh, and, you know, maybe that's using it for an assignment, maybe that's uh, using it for an outline. But I think that the technology itself creates a number of interesting problems, dilemmas, quandaries of what have you. So I think that rather than ignoring it, uh, it's better to address it. And I know that there's a lot of talk about embracing chat GPT. I'm still on the fence about that. And I'm happy to talk about this more with you all. But just kind of food for thought in this so that you know my perspective as the instructor of the course. So kind of first things first, uh, according to Nerdy Nav, which I guess is a website, uh, this is consistent with other things I found. So I just wanted a graphic. Uh, so somewhere around 90% of students surveyed used chat GPT for homework, about 60% for essays, and about 50% for at-home tests. So now, this is just one survey, like I said, and we can see how it compares to others. Uh, but what strikes me is that most students, it seems, have at least tried ChatGPT. Uh, and, you know, I realize that the way that students self-report usage changes and depends, and, uh, you know, some of that's social conformity, right? What's right and who you're talking to, right? You may not admit using chat GPT to an instructor, but you might admit it to a friend. So here's a, another sort of quote from Forbes. And I use Forbes just because I'm more familiar with Forbes. I'd heard of it before, right? So good source to use. So according to Forbes, most college students, 57% said that they didn't intend to use or continue using AI to complete assignments or exams. However, 32% said that they used it or would continue to use it, and 11% preferred not to answer. So um, I think what it comes down to is maybe two or three factors of why people use chat GPT. And, you know, again, ongoing discussion. So if you want to talk about this more, you have insight you want to share with me, please do. Um, I think the main one, just like... Um, normal plagiarism, and we'll talk about that and unpack that in a second, is a lack of confidence. Students don't necessarily feel confident in their own work or their own ability to write. Uh, another is time management, maybe laziness, uh, but that is in line with the old fashioned garden variety plagiarism that I've seen in the past. So I point it out because I don't think that it's tremendously different, right? Um, now, how are students using chat gpt well and this is from things that i've heard from students uh things that uh, i've read online things i've seen and and other sources so number one some students are using ai to brainstorm ideas some to create outlines write drafts summarize information revising creating responses to discussion posts or responding to quizzes now i will say I have seen or talked to students that are doing all of these things. And, you know, maybe in the interest of time, uh, I'll just go through a couple of these uh, because some of them seem innocuous. That is, some of them don't seem that bad. But if we look at just number one, brainstorming ideas, which may seem relatively harmless, my concern as an instructor is that using... AI to brainstorm ideas takes away an opportunity to practice critical thinking skills. What do I mean by that? What I mean is 
let's say you have an assignment and I say, I want you to choose a topic, which is something we'll be doing in English 102. And you don't know what you want to choose. So you use AI to brainstorm college essay research topics. Well, in doing that, first of all, you're not doing the brainstorming, which you kind of miss that opportunity to exercise that uh, skill. Uh, but also, you probably aren't going to be as connected to that topic. And the same is true for creating outlines, drafts, right, things like that. Um, creating responses to discussion posts, especially for this class, please don't. I, I mean, don't. Uh, the moral is don't use chat GPT in my class. I, I really don't think that you need it. I think you can be confident in your own ability. I think that you should take this as an opportunity to improve your skills. But uh, discussion posts in particular are something where I'm not grading harshly. I'm not grading, you know, looking for a certain answer. All I want is for you to do the thinking. And the same thing is true with quizzes. So the justifications that I've heard from students, uh, and again, I want to be transparent about this because I don't, I don't think that just because we have a technology that does something, it's inherently bad, right? But I do think we have to think about how to use it as a tool. And we'll go into that here in a little bit as far as other tools that have made learning easier over the years. So some students have said, well, it's just easier. It saves time. It's better than I would have written or it'll be used in the future. Um, I think all of those things are potentially true. I don't know that number three is necessarily true. A lot of the students that I've seen using chat GPT would have gotten a better grade had they just done the reading and done the work. Now it is easier and it does save time. Uh, but again, you have to think about well, why we're here, right? We're here to learn how to write, how to research, how to find reliable sources, how to exercise critical thinking. Uh, and number four, I, I don't see as a particularly strong argument. Uh, again, I'm happy to discuss this, but yeah, technology will be used in the future. Uh, but it is in our best interests to build the skills and then use AI as a supplement if we're in a situation where we really do need to save that time if we're you know working a job and we're really under a time crunch now that said there have been a number of uh, cases where lawyers have used ai and it's been an embarrassment to those lawyers so you know just kind of bear in mind that it, it is a tool but it's not a, a fix-all it's not duct tape right the downsides from my perspective is that it de decreases your critical thinking skills because you're not thinking through those things. Now, it's the same as say, sort of uh, going to Wikipedia and just using whatever's on Wikipedia. It decreases our ability to communicate and work on those communication skills that are necessary in our world. In fact, one of the most sought after skills that employers are looking for are communication skills. And if you're using chat GPT for a lot of essays that transfers right to emails to in-person communication to presentations to things like that and then it also creates a lack of comprehension and long-term absorption of knowledge uh, that you can't retain things if you're not reading and writing those are psychologically proven effective ways for us to learn things so I mentioned earlier that uh, some students have said that it's a tool, it's going to be used in the future. And I call it this the calculator defense. So students will say, well, chat GPD is just like using a calculator, um, which I don't think is true. A calculator requires you to know what to type in, right? So think about, say, a trigonometry class, and you need to find the inverse sine of something. Well, you're going to have to know how to put that into the, the calculator, and you're going to have to know what to do with that information. Right. So you have to know what the equation is and how it works. And yes, I know that there's AI that will solve a problem for you step by step as well. Um, but again, then if you try to apply that information in a practical setting, it wouldn't work. Um, so chat GP does not require that you know how to write a paragraph or conduct research. So I, I don't think it's an apples to apples comparison, if you will. Um, you know, there's this sort of idea of the golden hammer, right? Which is when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Uh, so I think that it's a tool, it's an interesting tool. Um, and I know that there's a lot of discussion about it. 
my sort of moral of the story is that I do view chat GPT as plagiarism. Uh, now, here's my reasoning for it. Again, as I've said several times already, happy to discuss this further with you. Maybe I'm missing something. But the student conduct for a shoreline, the student conduct handbook says that plagiarism is taking somebody else's ideas or words and presenting them as your own. So if we're using ChatGPT to create ideas, even brainstorming, those are no longer our ideas. And if we're using the wording from ChatGPT, it's definitely plagiarism. Now, could we make some sort of abstract case that we're not copying a person and therefore it doesn't really count? I don't think so. I, I think that plagiarism, the wording of taking somebody else's words or ideas and presenting it as your own is now a little bit antiquated. Uh, it's not necessarily a person, right? But it is a technology that's doing the work. So all in closing, just mention something that I find fascinating, which is more relatable, right? So a lot of us are familiar with Google Maps or something like that, and we can use uh, GPS navigation to get from point A to point B. A lot of people will use that GPS, and maybe you're one of these people, um, and it's not to disparage it, it's a thing uh, that you know, okay, I need to go from home to campus, and I'm going to use my GPS navigation, uh, even though I know how to get there. Well, the problem is, it's not like using a map. That is, if we used a traditional paper map, we would have to better understand how to get from point A to point B. What's happening is our brains are losing out on that visuospatial opportunity to navigate, to figure out other ways to get from A to B, right? So imagine you didn't have the GPS and you were going from campus back home and there was a road closure and you needed a detour. Would you know how to navigate or would you be totally lost? So, you know, again, just a, a little analogy that, yeah, we can use the tool when we have it, but can we do the work when we don't have the tool? All right. So there you go. If you have questions, comments, concerns, jokes, memes, or recipes, let me know. Happy to discuss this further for any of you that have questions or if there is something that I'm missing. Uh, but there you go. All right. Talk to you all later.